Yeah, Matt, you're absolutely right. This spring, I will mark 30 years with Pioneer, and it's been a real pleasure to be able to have the leading researched products in the market, to have a wide portfolio, to be the first company to have not only a fermentation product like 1174, uh, which has been, we've been selling for 35 years and is still the premier fermentation product in the market, to the, be the first company to have a, a double stack, if you will, with Buchneri inoculants to improve bunk life, and then finally to bring on our fiber technology products to improve fiber digestibility. So we've, we've pretty well encompassed and, and researched all the areas that we can improve silage from fermentation to, to bunk life to improving fiber digestibility. Bill, I think that's a great explanation, too, just looking at the, the scope and depth of our inoculant portfolio we have, because not only do we have all those products, but we've got those products by specific crops also. Absolutely. Crop specificity and the research that went behind that, there's still so many companies that are selling really cheap products that are supposed to work on every kind of a crop, uh, even dry hay, and we know that just isn't the case. Those are completely different types of crops with different types of epiphytic background bacteria. You know, if you look at haylage, for example, uh, we knock it down on the ground, we uh, tet it, we put, you know, we incorporate ash in it, which we really don't like to do, but it happens. That's a completely different uh, uh, crop than uh, corn silage that's high in sugars and we're direct chopping it and it's going to be wetter. So really we try to develop products that work in those different environments. Yep. I think that's one thing that set us apart, like you said, from the competition bill, the ability to go with crop specificity. And then we've got the options too that the producers need, whether if they're looking just for front end fermentation or the Buchneri or even as far as the fiber technology there. Yep. Absolutely. So, so one of our our trademark product, Bill, I think that a lot of us have worked with is 11C33. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a quick five-second blurb on 11C33? You know, where, where does it work well and uh, what are its advantages? It's got strains in 11C33 that we've researched for years that, uh, that drop the front-end pH. But if you just drop the front-end pH without controlling potential for yeast growing as you're feeding it out, that's a problem. So the Buchneri strain in there is our uh, third-generation Buchneri. We're on down to our fifth-generation <clears throat> Buchneri with our Rapid React to be able to do it quicker. But to be able to inhibit that yeast, we used to have a product in the market called 1132. And that was a tremendous product for dropping pH. But then when you fed that silage out during the warm period of the year, we'd get heating going on because yeast are rampant on high moisture corn and corn silage. So by having the Buchneri, we've really solved both ends, the front end fermentation and the back end feed out. Nice, nice. The other thing, when you talked about yeast there, I was thinking in the back of my mind, what about high moisture corn? Does that tend to carry more yeast than corn silage, do you feel? Or? Yes, absolutely loaded with yeast. That's where most of the yeast resides, even in corn silage, is on the, on the ear. Mm -hmm. So uh, high moisture corn, our 11B91 is just a fantastic product for high moisture corn or snap lids or ear lids. Uh, to, again, to knock back that yeast so that we, they're going to use up nutrients and they're going to cause heating. Okay. So the 11B91 would be the go-to product when we're talking earlich, high moisture corn, or snap lidge. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. On the other side, you know, there's a lot of producers out there that they just want to control the front-end fermentation, just drop the pH rapidly. Uh, let's pick on alfalfa haylage for, for the time being. What would be your go-to product there, Bill? Uh, 11H50. Uh, we do have a product that we have a Buchneri in it, 11G22, that we could use on um, on. Uh, on haylage if we if we really wanted to, but we don't see many yeast on, on haylage. We just mm -hmm. don't typically see it. So we really want to drop that pH. Remember, there's a high buffering capacity in alfalfa, and um, to drop that pH is a little bit more difficult. So we really want some aggressive strains that work in alfalfa. And our research shows that the strains that work in alfalfa don't necessarily work in corn silage and vice versa. So this omnibus kind of a product that does everything, um, again, they'll be lower priced, but they really, if we're really trying to preserve homegrown forages and make the most use of them, um, let's, you know, let's specifically go to a product that works like 11H50. So 11H50 on the haylage products then too. You talked about there's not much yeast on there. Do you think some of that has also contributed to how we wilt haylage in the field, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think our producers have led us to having drier and drier haylage to try to prevent that clostridia issues mm -hmm. with it. And it's just a great feed. But again, um, you know, we just don't, when we look at the laboratory results, there's just not that many yeast on, on alfalfa. There is on grass though, and okay. corn silage being a grass. Yep. If there's a lot of grass in the stand, then maybe a Buchneri product on a mixed stand, it has some merit. Would be beneficial. Yeah. So then if we were just going up against uh, Brand X out there, typical competition, you know, one product fits all, what would be to your go-to Pioneer product then for that? Probably 1174. Okay. Again, the baseline, um, Years and years of research uh, with our PhD microbiologists that, that worked in this area. So all of our products are backed by a tremendous amount of, of research that went into those. Um, and and this, you know, we do have the omnibus product, but for those, you know, cutting edge researchers, I think we want to get more crop specific. 
Well, Bill, I'd like to thank you for your time here as we've gone through and covered some of these products here. And hopefully that uh, as people watch these, they can learn a little bit more about each of these products here and go through them. And as always, if any of them have any questions, get a hold of myself or Bill and we'll can, we can visit with you on more in depth here on this. But it's just it's good knowing the research that we have done and we'll probably continue to do going forward too and all the forage products out there. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill.